Warning, you may never trust your gut feeling anymore after watching this video. I have a gut feeling that your stress level and terrible mood swings could be connected to how you treat your gut, but I promise that you'll remember this video the next time you have a gut feeling or catch butterflies in your belly. What, don't believe me? Then check this out. The human body is a massive pool of bacteria, fungi, viruses, and other forms of microorganisms. These microorganisms consist of good and bad, or you may say helpful and harmful microorganisms. Scientists refer to the ecosystem in which all these microorganisms coexist in the human body as the human microbiome. Furthermore, various body parts of our body have a localized version of this microbiome. For instance, we have the respiratory microbiome, the skin microbiome, the genital microbiome, and the gut microbiome. And if you haven't already, go ahead and watch our previous video where we covered all of these topics. Your gut is simply the organ that consists of everything from your mouth all the way to your colon. Therefore, the gut microbiome is the ecosystem of microorganisms that exist and functions in your gut. Interestingly, your gut alone carries over 100 billion microbes which consist of roughly 1,000 different species and a whopping 5,000 strains of bacteria. Yeah, I know, that can sound interesting or gross, depending on how you look at it. But that's not the most interesting part of this story. Did you know that 70% of your immune system is found in your gut? According to Dr. David Heber, the director of the UCLA Center for Human Nutrition at the University of California, nutrition is a key modulator of immune function. Not only that, but an article on the UCLA Health website reads, if you want to boost immunity, look to the gut. These are very interesting statements. The fact is that our diet and lifestyle have a great influence on the vast array of bacteria and fungi in the gastrointestinal tract. So, our diet affects the bacteria composition in our gut, this in turn affects our immune system. Plant foods that are high in fiber have been found to be extremely useful to the gut microbiome, which in turn helps our immune system. Jonathan Jacobs, MD, PhD, a professor of digestive diseases at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, puts it this way. What's present in the gut determines what education immune cells get. I think that's a really simple way to explain it. Dr. Jacobs further asserts that the typical Western diet, which is high in animal proteins, sugar, processed foods, and saturated fat, results in less diverse gut bacteria and promotes inflammation and chronic disorders. However, a fiber-rich diet, on the other hand, supports the microbiome and reduces inflammatory response. Yet again, that's not the most interesting part of this beautiful picture I'm trying to paint for you. The truly amazing fact here is that your gut has an outstanding effect on your mood and not just your immune system alone. Now how crazy is that? Consider this. 90% of your happy chemical, otherwise known as the neurotransmitter serotonin, which plays a major role in your mood, is produced in your gut. That's pretty cool, right? Surprisingly, the connection between your gut and your brain is bidirectional. This simply means that how you feel has a direct connection with the state of your gut. For example, if you have a sluggish gut, you may suffer a low mood and equally, you may feel like using the toilet when you're nervous or anxious. Have you ever had that butterflies feeling in your gut? You know, that feeling you get when you're anxious, nervous, or in love. You must have had that feeling of butterflies all over your belly when you finally met that man or woman of your dreams. Well, the next time you get that feeling, I want you to understand that a nerve has been stimulated that activates the gut and causes that fluttering feeling in your gut. So, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's just the chemicals acting up. Now, that's not to say that she's not your true love, but it is one good suggestion that your brain and your gut are connected somehow. This complex biological communication system is called the gut-brain axis. Your gut and your brain are connected both physically and biochemically. Approximately, there are about 100 billion neurons in your brain. Neurons are simple, what we could call brain cells. Interestingly, there are over 500 million neurons in your gut which are connected to your brain through nerves. One of the biggest nerves connecting your gut and your brain is called the vagus nerve. 
It might interest you to know that stress is a signal transmitted through the vagus nerve, but the brain burster is that the signal may also cause gastrointestinal problems. You might have noticed that sometimes when you're under an enormous amount of stress, you tend to use the restroom more often. Studies have shown that people with irritable bowel syndrome have a reduced function of the vagus nerve. So, a happy gut is a good way to take care of stress and even help you sleep better. Aside from the physical connection through the vagus nerve, your gut and your brain are also connected chemically through a chemical called neurotransmitters, which I mentioned a little earlier. This chemical is responsible for controlling emotions and feelings. For example, the neurotransmitter serotonin controls your body clock. An article on the National Institute of Medical Sciences website explains body clock or the biological clock this way. Biological clocks are an organism's natural timing devices, regulating the cycle of circadian rhythms. They're composed of specific molecules like proteins that interact with cells throughout the body. Nearly every tissue and organ contains biological clocks. Your body's clock is your biological 24-hour clock that controls hunger, temperature, and even sleep. The interesting thing here is that many of these neurotransmitters are produced by the trillions of microbes in your gut. Another product of your gut includes short-chained fatty acids or SCFA. Examples of these SCFA include butrate and propionate. They're manufactured by digesting fiber and SCFAs are very helpful in reducing appetite. If your gut is intricately connected to your feelings and emotions, then you want to figure out the best way to keep your gut happy, don't ya? Let me share a few tips with you on how you can keep your gut happy. It's natural to think the next thing to do is to get the next smoothie recipe and start abstaining from all kinds of food. That in itself is a form of stress and it won't do you any good. Rather, slowly begin by adding in more enriching and nourishing food. Fiber is always a good place to start with your meal adjustment. Eat a diverse source of fiber foods. Fiber is a kind of fuel for our gut microbes and research has shown that your gut will thank you for a good plant-based carb fiber. Fiber helps our gut microbiome manage inflammation, synthesize vitamins, and supply mood-influencing neurotransmitters like happy serotonin. Take your time to sit through your meals and thoroughly chew your food when eating. This will help you manage symptoms like bloating and reflux gas. It will even help you mitigate the feeling of hunger soon after your meal. Drink lots of water. Your gut needs it. You can always carry a jug of clean water even as you work. You can put some fresh herbs, lemons, or even cucumber into your water to give it a good taste and make it more appealing. If you found the information in this video educational and fascinating, then I've done a good job. My goal on this channel is to bring you highly educational health information with a very interesting presentation of the facts so that you can enjoy learning. If you like this video, then you're definitely going to like the other videos just like this one that we've put on this channel. If you'd like to know more about the microbiome, then check out my video on 1.5 kilograms of the bacteria in your gut. You can also follow the prompt on your screen right now to watch the next educational and entertaining health video on our channel. And while you're doing that, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and give all my videos a thumbs up to encourage me to make more interesting videos like this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.